All right, guys, today got a really quick one. So this is uh, from Nick out in South Carolina. Shout out. Uh, so what, what the question was is, you know, is there a way to tell your computer you only have one factory oxygen sensor uh, still installed? And the reason that that would be, there's really two scenarios, and one of these I've actually had to do. So scenario one is one of your O2 sensors fails, and, you know, you don't have cash to go get a new one, or you don't have time to go get a new one, whatever it might be, but you ultimately need the car to operate and get you where you need to go. So that's one reason you might try to run off of one. And the other reason is if you do stuff like a turbo and you end up needing to install a wideband, uh, you know, on one side or the other, and you aren't going to tap an extra bung so that you can still run both factory O2s plus a wideband, uh, you know, something along those lines. Um, you know, those are some reasons you might want to do this. So the question is, can it be done, and if so, how? Uh, so the short answer is yes. It's actually extremely easy to do that in the tune. There's only two things you have to change. So let me show you how to do that first, and then I'm going to come back to this log, and we'll talk about is it really the right thing to do. So in your tune here, and we're working in binary editor like always, and we're working around a stock A9L computer, uh, which is for a five-speed EFI Fox. And the first thing you have to do is go into this O2 Hego area, and you need to tell it that you only now have one oxygen sensor. So uh, by default, of course, it's set to two. We change that to one, and that's the first thing. Now, the question is, well, which one are you keeping in? So it's going to be either the one on the driver or the passenger side, and you have to tell the computer that both sides need to make their fueling decisions based on whichever one you've chosen to keep. So to do that, you go into your fuel section, and you go into injector, and right here you have something called injector output port. So what you're seeing right here across the top, this one through eight, this is your cylinders. So uh, for those of you that don't know on a small block Ford uh, that goes in these, these 5.0s, your number one cylinder is the front cylinder on the passenger side of the car. And then you work back one, two, three, four, going you know back toward the back of the engine. Uh, and then number five is going to be the front cylinder on the driver's side of the car and then working back six, seven, and eight toward the back of the car. So that's your, your cylinder order, not to be confused with your firing order. Now, when you think about it that way, you now can divide your motor into a left side, right side, bank one, bank two, and bank one is going to be the one that matches cylinder number one. So bank one is the four cylinders on the passenger side of the car. Bank two are the four cylinders on the driver's side of the car. So... Let's say, as an example, you uh, put your wideband in your driver's side, and so now you have to make all decisions on passenger side. Well, passenger side is bank one. So we can leave these four alone, and we'll just go into the other four and set everything to bank one, and now all of the fueling decisions are made based on reading uh, that 102 sensor that you've left in and everything you know, generally still works. Now, the question is, should you do this? Is this a good idea? So it's, it's not the end of the world. It's really not ideal if you're going to still use uh, adaptive learning and closed loop fueling, which I always recommend doing. But the reason is, you know, cylinders aren't perfect. So there's always going to be slight fueling differences from cylinder to cylinder and bank to bank. And, you know, no engine will ever be perfect on both sides if you give it the exact same amount of fuel. So you always have some variation from left bank to right bank. How much? A lot of it depends on kind of the, the health of your motor, but, you know, if, if you're in good shape, maybe a, a two to, you know, three, four, five percent difference side to side is not uncommon. Uh, if things are not great, you know, you're starting to lose compression on a cylinder or something's, you know, weird that way, uh, you know, you can see crazy stuff or you can have a, you know, vacuum leak that's uh, hidden under the intake and weird stuff like that. So it only seems to affect one side or the other. So uh, the reason I'm saying all this is, you know, fueling is never perfect side to side. And it's probably a better idea before you pull out a sensor, if they're both functioning, to do some logging and figure out which bank generally runs leaner and richer. And the way that you can tell that is with these camera F1 and camera F2. So what we're looking at this log, this is called uh, the, the keep alive memory, essentially. And these are the fuel trims uh, for those two banks. So again, camera F1, which now is in yellow, that's going to be bank one, which is by cylinder one, which is on your passenger side. So when this says, like right here where we're at in the log, that the cam ref is at 0.96, what that means is whatever fuel it would normally have if everything was perfect, this is a multiplier of that. So this is actually 
pulling about 4% of fuel. So if it was at exactly one, it would be not adding fuel or subtracting fuel to try to make things happy. Uh, but if it's 0.96, that means it's things are running a little bit rich, so it's pulled 4% of the fuel. And we go to bank two, it's at 0.98 right here. So that one uh, is a little different. It's only having to pull 2%. So what that tells me is camera F1, uh, side one, this is running richer. Uh, so with that being said, you, you know, you have to probably install the wideband if you're going to pull one and not the other. Put the wideband on the side that's leaner so you're at least tuning for safety. Um, that's, that's kind of the short answer. But better yet, just leave them alone. And something else people don't always know about these is that if you leave the adaptive learning and the closed loop set up in place, uh, even when you're at full throttle and you're running all the way up through the RPMs, even though it's not learning anything particularly at those RPMs, it does still make reference to kind of a more mid-range cell uh, where you're driving, and it's still slightly adjusting the fuel. So even at wide open throttle, even though it's not learning, it could still have some slight fuel trims, lean or rich, based on some more regular driving patterns. So you know these are things to think about. Do what you want to do. It's your car, but you know this will get you by in a pinch if maybe you just you drop the sensor, something's acting weird, and you got to wait for a new one to come in uh, to the store, or something like that. Fine. Uh, would I recommend driving this way long term? No, not really. Uh, and honestly, if you're doing something like adding a turbo, you probably don't want to put uh, your wideband in either side. You should actually put it uh, somewhere in the downpipe after the turbo. So you've, you've combined the, the gases from both sides. You've gone through the turbo and on your way out to the exhaust from there, that's, that's a better spot to measure because now you're, you're sort of averaging everything across uh, both banks and, and getting a better measurement there. So this was a quick one tonight. Appreciate you guys. And uh, like always, we'll have more. Good luck. Godspeed.